Last episode I placed over 10,000 train tracks, destroyed an island, cleared a pillager mansion and built the start of my brand new distribution center. This time we expand the area even further with a brand new warehouse that's twice the size of the first one, add automated fluid transportation and storage, and even build a new train. Or two. But first, look at this. So between episodes I took a schematic of the first building and then I blasted two more into existence and spent a little bit of time inside faffing about to make it all work. And I also spent a bit of time messing around with the track layout, getting all the signals in and essentially making sure everything works. And as you can see, the trains are still flowing in nicely as they should. And I believe if they're on schedule, the freight train should be here in about 30 seconds. But either way, I'm loving how this distribution hub is coming together. It really is starting to look pretty cool. But we've got a bit of a problem. It's not a big problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. So we've got enough storage here for 60 different items from all of our different farms. We're currently only using about 15 or so, so we've got plenty of space for things as we expand. And of course, we've got much better access than what we had up at the mountain. But what we can't store is fluids. And of course, there are a bunch. There's things like milk and chocolate and honey and all sorts of liquids in this. And I want to be able to store those. And I think we're going to use this area here for liquid storage. And that's what the rail in the middle here is going to be for. It will be purely for the train that's collecting all of the liquids or dropping them off. But then that leads me to another problem. To do that, I need lots and lots of fluid tanks. And I don't have any at the moment. But it's okay. I think we can solve this. To the airship! <laughs> A few minutes later and I've got loads of the fluid tanks as well as hopefully everything else I'm going to need for this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just work out where I want the tanks. We're going to do three by three tanks. So they're going to be as big as they can possibly be. So how many liquid things are there? Is there a way to find out easily? I have liquid fertilizer, which I didn't even know was a thing. But we've also got experience and hyper experience. We have... Oh, geez. Okay, we have a whole variety of chocolates, but I think we'll probably just stick with the one for now. And then, of course, we've got milk, lava, and so on. So, yeah, I have a feeling maybe, like, 12 tanks would be good. And then we can just use them as we need to for, well, whatever we need, I guess. So let's just build up some of these tanks, figure out how tall we want them. So we need to check the scale with the rest of the factory. So... Yeah, maybe that's about right. So let's just get all of these built up. I have a funny feeling we're not going to have anywhere near enough fluid tanks here. Well, I haven't even done half of them and I've already run out of tanks. So I'm definitely going to need a whole lot more. Back to the airship. <laughs> well, I'm armed with even more than last time. Hopefully this will be enough. Ah, uh, I'm about 25 short. Dang it. Don't worry, I'm not going to say it again. Right, there we go. That's all the towers in. So one thing I am going to need is a bunch of fluid interfaces. So we need some chutes and some copper casings. So if we just stick a deployer back there, stack a copper in there, and we just need a bunch of chutes. Oh, maybe not 128. Jeez. So let's just make a bunch of those. Once again, 32 is probably too many, but whatever. And what I need to consider is we're going to have loading and offloading sections for this as well. So I think what might make sense is just to have one offloading point. And I believe we can actually filter the fluids. So that's probably going to be our best bet. How do we make smart fluid pipes? Uh, we need some brass sheets. Okay, we can do that. And I would assume that these work in the same way. Yeah, okay. So I imagine we can put sort of filters in there so we can have a number of liquids going through them. Because I think what would be cool would be to actually have two pipes running up here. So I'm thinking purely visual at the moment. We'll get to the technicalities of it in a minute. But my thinking is if we have two pipes here like this, and then we put filters on those, so only certain liquids will go down each pipe. Have a small holding tank here, so only one fluid's going through at a time. And then we'll have a pipe here that goes over to where the train's going to be. And that'll connect up around there somewhere. It probably needs to be a little bit lower. In fact, let's just bring that down by one. But we can figure that out properly once the actual train comes in. For now, let's work out the rest of this piping. I reckon if we just put a line across the top like this, with a smart pipe going into each one, that should do the trick just nicely. And I think that's looking pretty cool so far as well. Don't worry, I'll crack out some girders soon. Now, where it's going to get a bit trickier is loading up the train. I mean, these tanks here at the front, that could be fairly straightforward. You can literally just do something like this, and then we'll have those connect to the train. But 
How are we going to do the ones at the back? So I think the first thing I want to do is actually raise these up to the same height as that one there. And I've got an idea of how we can do the ones at the back as well. We might have to go underground. So that's the loading sorted out for the front tanks. Obviously, power's a whole different issue, but we'll get to that. But for the tanks at the back here, I think I'm actually just going to go underground and then have them sort of pop up over here. For example, like that. So that's how they'll look poking out the ground. So let's just quickly get these wired up. And in fact, I don't even need to go underground. I could just do this. If I get myself some brackets and attach these pipes to the floor here, I should be able to reattach the tank here. And that stops the pipes connecting underneath. So we'll just quickly do the same thing here because we want it to connect in the middle there. There we go. And that's how we'll feed the pipes at the front here. And I think it makes sense to put the pump here. Uh, where are they? In my offhand. There we go. So once I get the rest of these set up, I think we just need to work out power at that point, which is going to be an issue. We don't have a power station over here yet. The pipes are in. I'm just going to raise all the collection points up by a block, though, just so they'll fit better with the train when we finally build one. So that's the offloading system and all 12 loading systems. Now what I need to do is figure out power. So until we get a power station here, I do plan on building one, possibly next episode and probably over there somewhere. We're going to need some kind of temporary source of power. So what I might do is just stick a wind turbine in here or a couple of wind turbines. And we'll probably end up removing them, but we'll see if we can make them look good first. If we can, we'll keep them. If not, then, well, we'll just get rid of them, I guess. So I need to make myself a bunch of windmill bearings, and I'm going to need lots and lots of wool, which means I need to take a trip home. But that's already looking pretty cool, actually, and adds another splash of colour, too. I like it. Back with some windmill parts. Let's see if we can work something out here. I wonder if we just do, like, a couple of sort of enclosed single-column windmill-type things. Let's see what we can do. So that's the block that's going to be stuck. Do I have my glue? I do. Fantastic. And then we'll just stick a bunch of sails on. That should just work and create power. Excellent. Although we probably want it spinning the other way. Now let's build a little frame around it. See what we can do. So I want to make it a little bit wider at the bottom here. So we're using half slabs and these weird little corner bits. In fact, we could actually use those to make up the frame. I think what I might do is if we use framed walls, we can probably get something in the middle here as well. So let's quickly turn this off. Then framed walls. Yep, they sit perfectly in the middle. And let's get that all glued on as well. So that also spins. Yep, that's pretty cool. Though it could do with a roof. So maybe we can get away with using some of these. With some slabs on top. All right, that's looking pretty cool. And I reckon if we grab some copycat panels and maybe some of the andesite fencing, like we did on the lift near the start of the series, I think that could look quite cool. I mean, it might look awful, but I guess we're about to find out. So I think copycat panels are made with zinc. That is correct. Awesome. That's probably way too many. But we also need a whole bunch of these as well. So let's just do that. Now let's see how these look. Well, actually, that is pretty good. I mean, it's very simple, but to be honest, I think it's quite effective. Let's just sort out the rest of these walls. All right, well, that's one turbine, but it looks a bit weird on its own. So I think I might do another one or two next to it and just kind of link them all together. I've got three turbines in. That's looking pretty good. Let's not get run over. Now what I need to do is just link them all up. So we'll do that under here. But it's very slow, but we have power here coming from all three of those. What I need to do now, though, is grab myself a rotational speed controller and get it hooked up to all the pipes. And in fact, I do actually need to add some more pipes as well. And by pipes, I of course mean pumps. And I think I've just about got it. I've managed to get it spinning at about 100 RPM with those three windmills. So that's fine for now. We can always upgrade it when we get the power station in. But I think that's looking pretty good. And really, rain again? Starting to miss the savannah after all. But in theory, that should now all work. What I need to do now is to build a train here that's going to transport liquids. And then once I've done that, I can work out where the station's going to go. And although we're going to need different stations for when it pulls up to the different things that it's going to be collecting, I can probably link them all to the same thing and literally just stick a clutch in here i think i brought one with me certainly did with a redstone thing on top and we'll basically just cut the power to this whole area whenever there's not a train in the station then as soon as something pulls in it's only going to be connected to one of these at which point the pumps will turn up and whichever one's connected will either fill or unfill at least that's the hope so let's go clean up my inventory, head back to our workshop, and make ourselves a brand new train. So back over here at Beardview Valley, I'm going to build myself a train. But you've seen me build a lot of train engines. More than one or two. And this one, to be honest, isn't going to be too different to the ones we've already got, just probably with a few more pipes on it and a different block palette. But the good news is, if I do this and shake and look around and then turn back... Oh, no, it didn't work. 
Dang it, I guess I'm gonna have to build it myself. engine done and of course the tender but now we need to actually make some transport wagons for the fluids and there we go for a fluid transport carriage that should work quite nicely it's fairly straightforward we've just got three big tanks here got a fluid interface on this side here which will stretch out and hopefully connect to the ones we have at the bottom over in the new area and then we've got the one on the top as well that can either drop off or take whatever it needs to and yes i'm fully aware this is a very tiny train and it's very unusual for me to only leave it with one carriage and that's why we're not going to leave it with just one carriage. But for now, I am going to go take this over. I'm going to test it. I'm going to make sure it all works. And then when it does, we'll add another couple of carriages just to make it look a bit better. But I'm also going to remember to glue it all together this time before I turn it into a train. It is learning. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I think I've actually glued it all properly this time. But as usual, I probably haven't. Let's go check. Oh, it would help if I actually put some train controls and a seat in it. That would, that would really be helpful. So we'll put a seat in there. Some train controls. And a seat for me when I need a ride. Let's try that again. All right, well, it's formed this time. Let's call it Liquid Train. You know the drill. Give me a much better name in the comments and we'll get that sorted. The good news, I don't think we've left anything behind. Excellent. That train looks pretty cool, actually. Let's go take it to the new station and... I mean, I had to christen it, I suppose, didn't I? I completely forgot to remove my tiny little train. Out the way, you. I'm sure that will never happen again. Right, let's take this train over there. One moment, I should grab some train stations first, otherwise we'll be coming straight back. And just as the sun's going down, we have arrived. Let's see if it's actually going to connect. So we can see that everything is at the right height here. That's absolutely fine. One thing I am going to need to do, however, is... Yeah, we don't want two connecting at the same time, so I shouldn't really have them in line. But for now, the station I want to set up is this one, just the drop-off station. So that should just about do it. Okay, right, so that's the one set up for drop-off, but we are going to need to fiddle around with this. So these are four apart. So if we're connected to, say, this one, three spaces, and then that, that would place... Oh, jeez. Okay, right, that is actually quite awkward. I guess an easy solution would just be to reorganize these. I could have them so that they're sort of over by one. So if I just slowly back the train through the station, hopefully we'll only ever see one of these pipes connecting at a time. Let's just slow right down. So that one, then that one. Then that one. Then that one. Okay, cool. That's what we want. So if, for example, we were to put a station six blocks back, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we have one there, and then another one directly behind it, that should control the first two pipes. So, yep, that lines up, and obviously one block back, we have this station lining up. So I just need to put in a buttload of stations. Okay, and that should be all of them, because I need basically all of these to link up to the same redstone link. So we're going to need a line of redstone here, block in the middle, with a redstone torch and a link. So this is for the fluid station, we're just going to do double fluid tank, and we're going to link that to this redstone link over here, and hopefully that should stop everything. Look at that, perfect. And then as soon as we pull into the station properly, it should all turn on once I get a whole load of comparators, which I don't have with me. So I guess we're going to have to pop home and get the comparators, but then this whole system should be working. We should have a platform for each one of the stops, so for each liquid we'll have its own little station. And of course we've got the main drop-off station. So we're just going to call that distribution liquid drop. Now let's go get some comparators and finish this off. Ten minutes later and I'm back with some comparators. I really should probably put an express network through the uh, nether at some point, shouldn't I? And with the last comparator down, we can now see that the power has come on, but as soon as I pull the train away, it should hopefully turn off. Yep, look at that. 
And as we go past the other stations, it's not actually activating it. It's not until we properly pull into a station like that. So which one's this? That's the third station back by the looks of it. But it all seems to be working nicely. No matter which one we go to. Excellent. So now comes the easy bit, I guess. We've only got one liquid that we're currently producing, and that is lava. So I just need to designate one of these places as lava, name the station as such, and make sure the filters are correct. And I'm hoping that if we just put a blank one in this side, that should stop anything going that way whatsoever, because, well, the filter's empty. With this filter, we put in lava. Hmm, but we can't drag a liquid over to here. I mean, we can drag a bucket, but we're not transporting lava buckets. Hmm. Let me just ponder the smart fluid pipe here and make sure that it is gonna work. Okay, so it looks like we can just use buckets to do it. That is good. So this filter here should work. That should only let lava pass that point. And if we do the same thing here, put that one there, then lava should go into this first tank here. And I have made lots of filters for all of these. I'm just gonna chuck them on there for now so they're ready when we need to, well, add new liquids. We'll call this station lava because whenever a train wants to come collect lava, that's where it's going to need to pull in. But now what we need to do is actually get the lava over here, which means we do need to go back to the savannah. And we might as well take this train over there because we're going to need to line everything up with this one. We've arrived in Stone Valley Peaks and what we need to do is put a couple of storage containers down here and then pump the lava down from up there. So if we go have a look at what we're dealing with, basically this is our nether train. This is the one that goes and collects everything we need from there and the lava gets stored over here in these tanks so what i'll probably do is just connect up these two here probably underneath the ground i guess i don't really want lava flowing through the village so yeah we'll just hook up some pipes to these tanks here we'll pump it down underground and then we'll bring it out over by the station and i guess it's going to make sense to get the pipes in first so let's figure these out so that's the pipe connected up i just need to make sure it's got power so if we just steal the power off of here and send it this way, and then probably just move this down a block to save us on some components. So that's the first one in, but what we're gonna need to do is pull the power from there over to the pipe every probably 15, 20 blocks or so. It's gonna be a long pipeline. And a few moments later, we have lava coming through. Excellent stuff. However, I think we might need a couple more containers here. Oh, in fact, with the space we've got, maybe just one more. Now if we put a pump there, portable storage interface there and move this station back a block then if we pull into that station that should link up excellent now we just need to get power to here so let's just go around the back here and then we'll just steal some power from there that should load up our train yes look at that excellent so we now have stations set up at both sides i think we might actually be able to get away with chucking a driver in there putting this thing on a schedule and at least filling up that first vat on the other side because we're gonna need lava next episode for a brand new power plant so we need to find ourselves a driver and i need to get myself a train schedule which means i need to go home again and i can't really take that train anymore which means i need to wait oh only four minutes this time that's actually not too bad but then we can bring our tiny train back here with a lead and a train schedule send this thing on its way and well hope for the best well i've dared to hope for the best and uh well we we didn't get the best we didn't get anywhere near it so i'm having a very strange problem you may notice i've got a few glass bits of pipe here that's so i can see where the lava's going and it's all to do with these filters so when a train comes in it starts pumping the lava and it's not going past this filter unless i take it off and put it back on again weird right and then the same thing's happening up here i've tried experimenting i've tried blocking the lava so this will not allow lava through this one will allow lava and so on and it works fine if i put the filters on while the train is in the station however when the train drives off and then comes back the lava just gets trapped again down there and i honestly i cannot figure it out and the train only arrives once a day so this has taken quite a while quite a while to figure out that i'm, I'm either doing something wrong or something's broken i i don't really know so i'm gonna do something slightly different and that is to hope once again that we never need to store more than six liquids here because what I'm actually going to do is completely remove this sort of top pipe and everything that goes along here, at least from a functionality point of view. I do quite like how it looks. And we're going to use these top ones here as the drop-off points and the bottom ones as the collection points. And that way we can just have two vats of lava, two vats of milk and so on. Which means I don't need this whole big bit of framework anymore and we've got a bit of jiggery pokery to do. So I best crack on. So a bit of a shuffle later, I think we're good. The train has also pulled in. I've reset its schedule, so it now goes into the lava drop-off. As you can see, the lava's going into there, and then it instantly gets pushed into this one at the back. And then what I've done is I've removed the bracket that was on this one, so now this pump here 
will actually pull from both of these. So if we want the train to fill up, in theory, I should just be able to reverse it to the next station. Or the previous station, I should say. So if we pull into Lava Collect, it now should be pulling the lava out of the tanks. And, yep, look at that. It's, it's filling up the train again. In fact, we can see that visually here. So, it works. It's much simpler. We don't have to faff around with filters. And we don't have to do any more troubleshooting. But that's good. I mean, it's a simpler system and we don't get to use the filters. But I clearly don't understand them or how they work. And that also means that any other liquid trains, we can just assign them to one of the five remaining tanks. So we're good. Not quite what I hoped for, but it does the job. So after the last episode, I had a lot of questions about why I've built a massive distribution center 6,000 blocks away from anything else. And there's a few reasons, to be perfectly honest. One of them is that this is not just going to be a sort of distribution hub for all of these items here. It is also going to be a sort of large processing facility. So there's going to be a bunch of different factories around here that are going to be processing the raw goods that we're making and turning them into more useful things. So, for example, we'll have a big building that's just going to process all of the sand into all the different things that we can get from sand, which I think we can get like red sand, we can get sandstone, we can get gold, we can get dead bushes, we can get all sorts. And of course, glass. So we're going to end up with a whole bunch of different processing facilities over here. But the other question was, how am I going to access these resources? Because if everything's stored over here and my main base is 6,000 blocks that way, what good is that? Don't worry, I have a plan. So as you should know, with each of these storage facilities, be it liquid or solid, we've actually got collection points as well as a drop-off point. So this is the drop-off point for these, and these are individual collection points for all of the different resources. And all of these are going to be linked up to the station, so if a train pulls into the spruce station, that's what it's going to load up on. And that's not only going to be useful for moving goods around here and taking them to the factories where they're needed, but it also means I can have a personal delivery train. But to explain this, we need to head back to our main base. Right, and here we are, we have arrived. Perfect. So, the plan. Now that the logging and freight trains are no longer coming over here and dropping stuff off, we've got a bit of space to work with. And we're going to make ourselves a personal delivery train, which basically means it's, it's a train that's not going to run on a schedule. And the concept is pretty simple, and hopefully it's going to work. So if, for example, I'm over here, I'm working away, and, oh, in fact, I've got a good example here, I've got no stone, what I want to be able to do is come outside, grab a schedule off the wall, and then send it off to go collect what I need. So the only one we've got set up at the moment is lava. So if I needed lava, I would just basically tell it to go get some lava. I'd send off my liquid train, it'd go there, get lava, and then come back and drop it off. I mean, lava wasn't the best example because we don't store liquids over here, but it's the only one that I've actually set up the station for. But once I've done them all, we'll have a great big list here. We'll make sure we prefix them all so we know exactly which district it is. And I'll just be able to select cobble, spruce, or whatever it is I need the train to go get. Even if I need multiple resources, I can probably get away with that as well. And yeah, it will just go off, get what it needs, come back, and drop it off straight into the system. I mean, it's not going to be instant, but if I see something getting low, it means I can just essentially put in an order. And the other good news is we've actually got a couple of platforms here we're not using, so I'm going to need to build something so we can offload anything that pulls into platform two, but I really do think this could work quite nicely. So I guess the first thing I need to do is to build yet another train. So I'm just going to stand here, do a weird transition, and now the train's ready. Look at that. And once again, it's pretty much the same layout as every other train that I've built, but it's, it's white this time. I use diorite. And because it's going to be picking up random goods from that warehouse at the other side and bringing them back, I've decided to give it a variety of carriages although there's something weird going on with this one here because the train is currently assembled but if i quickly disassemble it look that's how it's supposed to look it's supposed to be all nice and clean but then whenever i assemble it goes wonky so i guess i'm gonna have to try a different material for that but that's probably not a bad thing the white there and the white there is maybe a little bit too much white anyway but i'm not gonna bother sorting that out right now before we get this train set up at the other end i want to make sure that it's actually gonna be able to offload things so this one here is our storage container it's absolutely round full of barrels and we've also got sort of collection points at the right heights so when it goes to the other end it should connect just fine and for the exit point i've actually put it on top here so that's what we're going to do we're going to have a vertical exit point so we're going to sort of bring the goods over and then drop them down into the vaults and we don't need to worry about hooking up the other three vaults because we don't actually use them for anything so i guess the first thing i need to do is work out where i actually put the storage interface i think it was on this row here let's just quickly find out Yep, it is indeed. Right, so at least we know where that's going to go. And to be honest, we might as well put them over the other tracks as well, just to make things look a bit better. So this should be quite easy to set up. We'll just have everything going down directly into the vault. And I believe I can actually deposit things directly onto a belt by doing this. No, I can't. 
Ah, dang it. That's fine. Not a problem. We'll just raise all this up by another block because I don't want to, uh, you know, lower the conveyor belt because then it's going to go through the train and we don't want that. But it should still be able to connect from there. Yes, beautiful. So let's just quickly move all this up a block. And that should just about do it. Perfect. And it doesn't look too bad either. So I need to take this train for a spin down to the distribution center. And once we're there, I can set up a whole bunch of new stations and make sure that this train can connect to any station that we've got over there. And that means it'll be able to bring back any resource I request. But this is probably going to be quite a boring process. So once it's done, I'll just show you how it works. Well, thankfully, that didn't actually take too long. I mean, it's a little bit messy. We're going to have to figure out a way to hide these. I mean, maybe like a small sort of control station would make sense here. But over this side, we can't really do much until we build the power plant and get rid of these things. So yeah, they're just kind of jammed in for now. But each station has been named accordingly. They're just called Order Acacia. They're all prefixed with order. So whatever it is we want to order, we know exactly what station to send them to. And they should all line up with our brand new train as well. But I think the best way to test that is going to be to go over to the other warehouse where there's not not actually things that will load and over here i've done the same thing i've not put the redstone in yet but i have got them all lined up and i've done the same for the second row because of course this warehouse is twice as big but it does mean i think currently the train's actually lined up at the backmost station and if we make sure it doesn't have a redstone signal going to it it will connect but as soon as we set that to receive it will disconnect so that tells me that it is all going to work what is an issue though is that i don't have any leads or schedules with me as always so let's go take this train home and then we'll send it back here to collect an order for us and just see if it works and i've also loaded this train up with coal because well it's just a delivery train i need it to be fast so i've got myself a driver and i've once again used to fly because that way i can actually sit behind and still control the train without having to replace him which is good but more importantly i've also now got a schedule and well we need to send him off to go pick something up and just test it really hope it works so in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an order for clay. Why not? And what we want it to do is to pick up, let's say, 10 stacks. That's fine, just for a test. And if we search up clay over here, we can just drag clay balls. That's what we've got over there. And then we'll do an order of cobble. Once again, we'll just do 10 stacks of that and put the filter in. And then we'll do an order for wood as well. Let's just grab some mangrove. Because that way it's going to have to use another platform. And once again, we'll send that to 10 stacks. And then we just want it to come back here. And once it gets here i don't want it to do anything basically unless the station gets power so in theory if i give this to this guy you should go get everything let's sit down enjoy the ride and well see what happens but if this works first time i'm gonna be amazed well i've arrived at the warehouses but uh well it's currently blocked so we're just waiting for that train to leave once it finishes off loading we should pull into that same platform in fact this is a really good opportunity for me to run away and of course, it starts raining. Classic. But if we stand here, we should see everything in action. Here it comes. So it should stop next to clay first. Seven, eight, nine, ten stacks of that. Yep, that looked about right. Now it should grab cobble. Oh, it's working. This is amazing. And now it should go round and then come back in again and come get some mangrove. In fact, I'm going to get ready to hop back on the train. So we'll watch this one from here. We'll just make sure it connects. Well, it looks like it's working. Oh, and we're off again already. And now hopefully we should arrive safely at the other end. And then the train will offload and just sit there until we're ready for another order. Now, this should be the simpler part of the test. I don't expect any problems here, except maybe from those creepers. I should probably go to bed. Let's quickly hop out of the train, jump up here, and it should just all offload nicely. And in theory, the train shouldn't drive off when it's done. It should just stay here. And that looks to be the case. Amazing. It works. So that means we now have our very own delivery service. So anytime we're running low on resources here, as long as it's something we're farming and storing over there, we can just send off for it. I can't believe that worked. But sadly, that is pretty much all we've got time for today. However, before you head off, let me stop you right there. I just want to say a huge thank you for all the epic support this year. You've all been absolutely incredible. And as an extra special thank you to all my patron supporters and channel members, by the time this video goes out, this world will be available to you guys for download. And I've even been nice and moved world spawn to over here at Beard Duval. But the world will be exactly as it is pretty much at this exact moment. The only thing you probably won't have would be the web displays thing and the train map. So if you do want that, you're going to need to install the track map and the web displays mods. But other than that, everything should work absolutely fine. So once again, just a huge thank you for watching the videos and supporting this series. You've all been absolutely incredible. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you on the next episode. And hopefully next year I'll be less injured so I can get back on my normal schedule.